everybody, it's Emily back with another Grass River Micro Class. So we are in the thick of our maple syrup season here in Northern Michigan and at Grass River we are collecting sap and getting ready to boil and so this is a very busy time of year um, but I thought it'd be a great time this week to take a break from the busyness of collecting sap um, and actually talk about the science behind maple sap. So today we're gonna to talk about the purpose that sap serves for the tree. We'll talk about um, how sap moves through the tree. And then we'll also talk about why it is that maples are really the one type of tree that we tap along with a couple other. So let's start by talking about the purpose of sap for the tree. So the tree has two different types of vascular tissue. And vascular meaning, you know, in the same way that our bloodstream works, this moves, nutrients, minerals, sugars um, throughout the, our body. And so in the tree, it moves it throughout the tree. So those two types are phloem and xylem. And phloem is actually part of the inner bark. Um, and what phloem does is it is the primary mover of photosynthetic products. And by photosynthetic products, I basically mean sugar, right? Um, the sugar that the plant is producing through photosynthesis. And so phloem is responsible for taking that sugar and moving it throughout the tree to wherever it's needed. Um, xylem, on the other hand, is what is also um, termed sapwood, and that is a much larger um, part of the tree in a cross-sectional look at the tree. Um, and what xylem does is it moves water and also nutrients in the form of minerals from the roots up to the canopy of the tree. So it's responsible for moving everything that the plant is taking in through its roots up to the rest of the tree. So as you can imagine, sap is a really important thing for the tree um, to move nutrients and minerals and water around um, the entire tree structure. And this isn't just happening in maple trees, by the way. This is all trees do this, all vascular plants. Um, so let's start talking about how um, that sap is moved. Um, and we'll start by talking about how the sap is moved when the, leaf has, when the tree has leaves, because it's actually different um, than how it's moved when the tree doesn't have leaves. So when the tree has leaves, the leaves actually have these little tiny pores or openings um, called stomata that are opened up for the tree to be able to take in carbon dioxide, which if you remember back to your junior high science days, um, carbon dioxide is an essential ingredient for photosynthesis, right? Carbon dioxide plus water plus sunlight yields glucose, a form of sugar that the tree uses for energy. So these stomata are taking in carbon dioxide, but because there are these openings in the leaves, what's happening is that there is also some water lost um, when, these, when these stomata are open through just evaporation, right? But this type of evaporation has an actual special term called transpiration. And all that means is just water that is evaporating from the surface of a leaf through the stomata. You might think of this as like, you know, a necessary evil sort of for um, the tree to be able to take in CO2, but it actually, the evaporation of this water is actually helping the tree because what it does is it creates a negative pressure at these stomata um, and then water is drawn up through the roots to sort of fill in that pressure um, to stabilize the pressure throughout the tree. So that's how sap moves normally when the tree has leaves on it. Let's talk now about how sap moves when the tree doesn't have leaves on it, like this time of year. All right, so when the tree doesn't have leaves, it can't move sap through transpiration, right? There are no stomata, there are no leaves. So what the tree does is it actually relies on a mechanism called stem pressure. And this is pretty unique to maples and a couple other trees um, here in the Northern Hemisphere. And we'll talk later about why it's unique to them. But let's begin by, okay, we're gonna talk about the structure of a maple tree. So around the xylem, around that, um, type of tissue that's moving the water and the minerals from the roots up to the crown of the tree, there are what are called hollow fiber cells. And these are actually filled with air. And so there's like a very thin barrier between um, these hollow fiber cells and the xylem itself. And so air actually um, diffuses across that boundary. And so then 
there are sort of little air bubbles in the sap. And this is important because when the tree freezes, when the xylem, when the water inside the xylem freezes, that those gas bubbles, those gas molecules contract, right? Gases contract when they get colder and expand when they heat up. And so those gases contract, which makes the entire, um, you know, fluid and gas mixture in the xylem contract. And therefore, again, water is drawn up through the roots to replace that negative pressure, um, sort of like a straw. And that's why we tap maple trees um, during the cycle of freeze and thawing because that's when the, the sap is really running. Um, because when it freezes at night, the water is drawn up into the xylem. Um, but then when it unfreezes during the day, you can imagine there's this huge buildup of pressure in the tree because now it has all this extra fluid in it. Um, or I guess extra space is taken up by the gas that expanded when it heated up during the day. And so then if you put a tap in the maple tree at that time, sap will drip out as a way to relieve the tree of some of that insane buildup of pressure that's happening inside the tree. So when we tap a maple in the late winter, early spring, um, we are uh, harvesting that xylem sap. And so if you remember, Xylem sap is um, a mixture of water and minerals from the ground, right? And you might say, well, why is it sugary then? Because the phloem is the one that really um, transports the sugars from photosynthesis, right? It's sugary because this sugar that the plant has harvested in the previous growing season is actually stored as starches in a different type of cell right surrounding the xylem. Um, and so the, that starch is actually converted into sucrose, so a, a really quick, um, simple form of sugar by enzymes that are released into the tree at this time of year. And so then the xylem is what is transporting that sugar up to the tree canopy, which is important because um, this is the time of year that maples are flowering. They are, especially red maples, are one of our earliest flowering trees. So they're transporting that sugar up there um, to produce these new flowers and then to produce the new leaves also. And once the cycle of freezing during the night and thawing being above freezing during the day stops, there that um, expansion and contraction of the gases in the sap stops and then that pressure differential between night and day stops, which means that the sap will no longer flow out of your tap. So that's why early spring is really the key time for tapping maples. And speaking of tapping maples, people do actually tap a couple other species of trees, um, including black walnut, uh, butternut and sycamore. Um, clearly not as, that's not as prolific um, as tapping maples is, but those trees are able to be tapped because they share that very unique anatomy with the maple tree of having those hollow fiber cells right around the xylem. Um, all other types of trees don't have that. And so if they don't have those hollow fiber cells, cells that are filled with air, they don't have um, the ability for those cells to input air bubbles into the sap. And then that takes away the entire pressure differential. So many trees, the sap only moves during the growing season um, through transplant inspiration and it will not move um, until the tree has leaves on it. All right, that's it for this week. Thanks for tuning in to the science of sap. Um, and we are still in the early stages of um, maple season, maple syruping season. So if you haven't tapped some trees that you have on your property, um, there's still time. So uh, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.